Hey Kingdom, today I'm gonna beat Baldur's Gate 3 by using only jump action. So we start a new game on Honor Mode. Are you ready? And I need to create the right character for this mission. Dwarves looking cool, but I decided to start as Wood Half Elf because Wood Half Elves got additional movement speed. My starting class is Monk, and that's my character. Jumping Queen is ready, and if you're ready to, drop a like and let's go. Let's do this. And I start in game by adding single action I will use to do damage on this run. And yeah, you heard me right. I'm not going to jump and cheese the game with Gale Bomb. So you're probably asking right now, how this crazy potato toot will do damage with jump? Jump is not doing any damage. Right? Wrong. Just give me a minute and you'll see. So after a few jumps on the ship, I met another lady who liked to jump a lot. She is my new best friend, because now she can distract enemies while I'm jumping right to the Nautiloid control panel to crash octopus ship and wake up on a beach for this crazy adventure. I don't need a lot, but still I looted all beach and then get my new friends, still ignoring all combat, because we're still level 1 character. And after arriving to the gates of Emerald Grove, Jumping Queen and friends right at the time when goblins trying to attack humans and tieflings. They definitely need our help, but we got more important business to do. So by completely ignoring this combat, I went straight to the blighted village, where we of course not going to go. Instead, I turned to right, got friends with a dog. I don't need dog for this run, but at least it's some experience points. And also we're getting a nice experience points for just exploring the world and getting to the new areas, like Wookiee's Rest. And that's the part where Jumping Queen will finally become broken very soon, but for we need to break the door. I guess breaking door with my legs, not violating challenge rules. But instead of helping everyone, I went straight to the burning room. This room is really dangerous, so I stopped the timer, made few dashes, few jumps, and got a chest in a pocket. Then we saved everyone and get our rewards and it's time to get back or I better say forward to getting another broken items to make Jumping Queen even more broken. So I sneaked into Blighted Village and got another chest in a pocket. After realizing that I forgot a really important item, I went back to Druid Grove and got my shovel. Sadly, Will haven't made this fight. But who cares, we got full party and can continue our journey. After approaching main gates of Blighted Village, I went straight to the left. In the forest, there's a lot of secret stashes with items I won't be able to use in this run. But what I'm looking for right now is perception checks. Even after failing those, I can just dig the ground and find a chest, with a really valuable and important item. And surprise surprise, I got everything I need to start doing a nice amount of damage with my jumps. First of all, I need to unlock chests that I got 5 minutes ago. My party and strategy will be really crazy, but won't be really lucky. So after wasting all my lockpicks, I decided to do it old-fashioned way. I just went to the highest place I found and throw down chests. Got my valuable items and now let me explain the plan and the build. Pay attention, you just may learn something here. So we are level 2 character with just 3 items. My first and most important item is Hammer Haft. After equipping this small, I'm getting passive active future that I can dodge on and do damage when I'm jumping. Jumping costs bonus action, and I can jump only once per turn. Right? Wrong. When playing as Monk, I can use Step of Wind Dash, and the jump will no longer require bonus action. Jump will use only movement speed that I will raise with Dash, Haste Helm from Blighted Village that gives momentum, and Fleet Fingers that give me free jump to jump away from the fight and not being targeted. So let's test this broken build on monsters. I'm starting with Step of Wind Dash that uses bonus action and one key point, followed by normal dash with my action that effectively gives me 41 one meters movement speed. One jump costs only three meters. I can do 14 jumps, which translates to more than 30 damage average. And that's more than enough to defeat monsters in the early game. Just need to be careful. And after feeling some power, I decided I'm ready to make my build even more powerful. So I went straight to the dangerous territory of Goblin Camp. 
nothing interesting happened along the way and we are right at the goblin camp. Now I need a sneaky dude like Asterion to do one job. Talk with Crusher and lick his finger after doing nice and lucky rolls. Only Rogue can do this job as far as I know, but we can get this shiny stuff from his finger. Impressive. And all of this to get Crusher Ring. Just one jump, not a lot of damage. But don't forget, every dash doubles movement speed. So just from one ring we can get additional 5 jumps. But 45 average damage is not enough to beat Baldur's Gate 3. So we still got some work to do. I knew it, I fucking knew it. First of all, I decided to respect my party a little bit. So we went into Dunk Crypt. Gale and Jumping Queen, let's call her Jumpy, sneaked up behind. While Shadowheart initiated dialogue with bandits. That was just red herring to wait for the right moment to jump on all of them. And start a fight like this not using any actions. So I can start with my combo and jump these bandits down. Grimabok is down and Jumpy still got half movement speed. But what to do when I'm almost out of movement speed? After defeating all bandits on the low ground, I jumped to the high ground archer. And that's where I found myself without movement speed. And that's where fleet fingers come. This gloves comes with ability that gives you one jump without using any movement speed, action or bonus action. So Jumpy just jump away and she is safe. But your enemies is not on the next turn, of course. After getting access to Dunk Crypt and defeating some bandits inside, I decided to take a rest. And funnily enough, Wizards is already in my camp. So now I can prepare my party. Let's start with Jumpy. Now she is level 1 rogue to get some proficiency in armors and this stat distribution. Followed by two levels of monk. Because my party is not fighting, I am leveling mostly constitution and dexterity for health and armor class. I picked long strider, enhanced sleep and feather fall for Gale. He still will be my wizard. And it's really important to get light cantrip right now. And his subclass is Transmutation Wizard. Shadowheart will still be my cleric, but I switched her into Life Domain Cleric. With these stats and spells focused on buffs and heals, Healing Word, Warding Bond, Shield of Face and Enhance Ability. But Astarion is tricky, I got no good use for him right now, but he will be insanely useful later. And trust me, this dude will break the game. And his class right now is Barbarian. Next day everyone buffed Jumpy. And my main goal right now is to destroy some monsters over here and get few levels to avoid being one-shotted in later stages of the game. Before every fight I'm trying to cast Enhanced Leap, so I can jump for any distance and then with few jumps jump away from the fight. But there was not a lot of situations where I need to run, because my average damage right now is more than 60 with 72 meters movement speed at the start of the fight. So bandits is not a problem for me right now. What about skeletons? Skeletons is not a problem too. So I jumped straight to Emerald Grove. Got some quests over there, bought some potions and lotions, solved some problems with tieflings, but overall we are ready to go and become really broken. Because even more than 6 average damage is not enough to beat last boss. But that should be more than enough to destroy some Gityanki patrol. Therefore Jumpy decided to destroy these lizard boys. And I don't even need my full movement speed meter for this. But in the next few minutes Jumpy will become 4 times stronger. This is too fucked up for me even to think about. So our party went straight to the mountain pass and with few jumps forward and 20 more jumps on this trader, we got ourselves awesome item completely free. Good amulet to stay healthy and very good armor to increase our initiative and jumping distance. But instead of jumping I took elevator to take a look on this beautiful mountain view and unlock teleport location in this Gityanki Kreshe. Getting permission to enter Kreshe is really easy, it takes only around 50 jumps to do so. 
but I got no actual business inside Crochet. I just bought a few potions and we're ready to move to the next really broken item. Gail is not ready though, so he ate a spell sparkler. And my next point of interest is this bell in the blighted village. We went straight down there and found ourselves in the spider cave, but most importantly we leveled up a little bit and now GMP got two levels in Monk and three levels in Rogue with Sif subclass with additional bonus action. Gale unlocked haste spell and Shadow Heart can improve party's HP. But most importantly, at the start of the fight, now I will have two actions and bonus actions, which gives me ability to make a lot of dashes and to increase my movement speed up to 130 meters. And average damage right now is more than 110 per round. I destroyed little spiders really easy. And next item I will get will almost double this damage. But we need to face Spider Matriarch. Spider Queen barely survived first round and wasn't able to do any meaningful actions on second. So Jumpy ended here in a few more jumps and dealt with her other spiders in the same manner. After resting and getting new colors for my clothes, we stand on the spider web. And after casting a feather fall, we can destroy the web and go straight to the Underdark. There's a lot of long roads and labyrinths in Underdark. But with our jump ability, we can traverse through the map really quickly. And I went straight to the Mushroom Boys, but I'm not really interested in their quests. Most importantly, they got little gnome in their camp. And I'm really interested in her boots. She definitely don't want to give me these boots for free. And I got two options. Option A. Complete a really long quest line to finally get these boots from her. I prefer option B. It's gone. These boots give ability to use dash as bonus action. And you may ask me, why do you need these boots? You already got bonus action dash from Rogue. But now I will tell you how this ability can double my damage using secret dash mechanic. Please. Continue. So let's start with my normal buffing routine. I'm hasted and doing two dashes with my actions and more dashes with bonus actions. But here's the secret. After using all actions, I got 264 meters movement speed. But how? Are you serious? Normal dashes just add in your standard movement speed to your current pool. So for example, if I got 10 movement speed at the start of the round, using dash will give me 20 movement speed. Another dash 30, another dash 40. And we are limited to only 3 dashes. But click heals just doubles my movement speed. So if I got 100 movement speed after 2 dashes, I will get 200 movement speed after click heals. I fucking knew it. No, you didn't fucking know it. I just told you. So what does it mean for us boys? Basically our damage is just doubled. Now I'm making more than 220 damage average in a round to multiple targets with more than 250 damage maximum. It should be already enough to defeat last boss, but we're playing on honor mode so I want to be sure. And I get a plan how to almost double this damage again. Smart. That's what I would have done if oh. I were you. I started with stomping some undeads on the mountain hills to get access to the next act of the game, Shadow Cursed Lands. And I need protection from Shadow Curse. And the easiest way to get protection is to get this mystical lantern. And while this spider is definitely a strong opponent, Sanctuary is not protecting him from my area attacks. So a few minutes of jumping and all enemies are dead and lantern is mine. 
I can get Tolly Tolly protection and go straight to the Shadow Cursed Lands. This area is really dangerous and I will find myself ambushed a lot of time. But after using all my dashes and using all my movement speed, I found out a new mechanic in Baldur's Gate 3. Basically, when you run far away from the fight, you don't even need to use flea button, you will just end the fight automatically. And if you're wondering where I'm going right now, I'm going straight to the mausoleum and temple of Shar. So I defeated some shadow templars and stole umbral gem from Jurger. Dashed away from the fight, inserted my umbral gem to activate elevator. But then honor mod happened. Look at this shit! Maybe I think I deserve to die! No, I don't know! <laughs> Guys, if you're watching here right now, write something in the comments, because I was literally crying at this moment. It took incredible amount of time to get over here. Tons of jumps, maybe even millions of jumps, to end like this. And if you don't understand, let me explain how awful this situation. Remember, in the start of the run, I acquired this awesome amulet. It's not only giving me nice healing, but also succeeding on dash saving throws. So now my character is stable, but he too far away to pick him up. I went to wizards, but character is stable. She's not dead, so I can't resurrect her. I tried to use resurrection scroll from different positions. Nothing helped. I even brought Shadow Heart over here to try Mass Healing Ward or Normal Healing Ward and I can't target my character. Also, I can go back to Act number 1 or go to Act number 3 or just continue my storyline or doing long rest, so I'm stuck. All because of this moment. And I just can't end like this. Something wrong? What? Is there something wrong with anything? So I took all my knowledge of the game to find solution. I went back to Wizards and respect my Astarion. He is now Bard level 2. Bard's Song of Rest works on wall party no matter all the distance. So Jumpy got healed up and I instantly teleported to the closest location. Now we are fine and can continue our journey. In this location I went into Balthazar's room and tried to open his door. It's really hard to task, so it's better to use spell knock from Gale. In this room, in chest, I found Kalos glow ring, another piece of my puzzle. By having light cantrip on my mace, I will light up my foes, and this ring will inflict two damage from time to time. And as much as I like numbers, I like when like numbers go up. So drop a like right now, because we won't need numbers on this run anymore. My damage will become unlimited. Because I respect Astarion back to Barbarian. And now I finally got level 6. What's so cool about level 6 Barbarian? Now I can pick Animal Aspect and I'm picking Animal Aspect Elk that will give additional 1.5 meters movement speed to my party. Not sounding great. But also at level 6 Transmutation Wizard Gale got access to Transmuter's Stone that gives additional movement speed to my character. And every point of this movement speed will be quadrupled with my dashes. And most of the time at this point of the video I give you my new average damage calculation. But let's go to Inquisitor room because there's one more item I need over there and I will show you why right now I got unlimited damage. So I pretty normally buff myself and jumped straight to the room. And also right now I'm using Step of the Wind Disengage. It's not only giving me unlimited jumps, but also I won't provoke opportunity attacks. So now I'm basically unkillable. So I jumped more than 100 times and lost all my movement speed. And that's where Astarion comes into play. Aspect of the Elk will work in a radius, so by going away from the fight, I will take this buff off my teammates. And just by going back and forth, left and right, on and off, it will basically recharge full movement speed for my character as much as I like, and I can continue jumping. So by taking alert as my main feat, I'm ensuring I will always will be first in initiative. And because I got unlimited movement speed and my damage based on my movement speed, I basically got infinity damage and opponents will have no chance to do anything on me. You think it's completely broken? You're goddamn right. So I destroyed Gityanki Kurashe 
and took very nice gloves from elegant chest. Now every third jump I will do additional 1d4 damage and additional 2 damage from glow ring. Damage is really impressive and I can't do anything better than infinite damage. So I went straight back to the shard temple and destroyed Balthazar, ignored shard trials and opened door to the vault with knock and saved my song and straight to the main boss of this act, Ketrick Torm. Instead of big long fight, I picked a shortcut from the side of the building to skip big fight in the castle. And by using invisibility potion, I get right to the Ketrick Torm first fight. He is insanely armored and sometime lowering my damage down to zero. But even if I can make at least one damage with infinity damage, I will always end a fight in one round. That's what I did and Ketrick ran away. Jumpy went right after him. We took an elevator and found opponents that we'll need to destroy to get to the last boss. Ketrick, Gortosh and Orin. Ketrick is not a problem, I just defeat him second time after saving Night Song with invisibility potion. Still, it took around half an hour to do it. And because Astarion in the fight right now, actually he survived for two rounds. Still, he was really disappointed and became soup as always. His next form is more vulnerable to my damage and it took just one single round to destroy this big bro. So we went straight to the Baldur's Gate, I saved Emperor from Gitiankis. And normally Baldur's Gate is down with a lot of quests and a lot of stuff to do. But I'm incredibly powerful, so I want to go straight to the last boss, that's what I done. I jumped straight to the town, but forgot to turn off my shock wave. Very nice that I got some gold from my adventure, I gave gold, it's okay, turn off my thunder wave, and without any approval jumped on the cliffs near Wyrm Rock's castle. Climbed roots on the left side and went straight to the coronation room. That's where Gortash, one of my targets, but it will be really hard to defeat him in this room. Yeah, I could do it with jumping, but who cares when I got unlimited damage. And then I went to the lower city and jumped straight to this manhole. In the series I took a pass to the Baal temple. Normally to enter this part of the game you need to complete some quests, but I just shoot a fireball at the body on the top and doors is opened. I used invisibility potion to completely ignore all trials and I'm in the ball trial. I tried some tricks to go through this door, but I guess it was patched, so I was forced to quickly do basic quests. To enter fight with Orin and end her really easily in one turn. One turn sounds fast, but this turn lasted for a lot of time actually. So Orin is dead, I got my crystal and we are ready to face last boss. So we entered higher city. With our glorious allies, skeleton and elephant. That's it basically. I could take a fight on the main square, but it will take a lot of time. So I decided to use invisibility and fly action on Gale and just skip this stuff. I'm making sure not to get caught by guys with an eye on their head because they will spot invisible units. But just by taking pass to the right and moving at the right time, I got straight to the main building through the hole in the wall, to the left and upstairs and through the one more hole in the wall. And here we are, last fight guys. It was impossible to keep Astarion out of the fight. That's nice. Then what? This means I don't have infinite damage right now, or do I? Because now instead of using Astarion to recharge my speed, I positioned him to jump outside of the radius and jump inside of the radius every time I'm doing so. And this basically makes my movement speed unlimited. And I managed to down most of my enemies on the first turn. All clones. All elites, so only dragon got protection from damage that is 4 or below. And I decided to go straight to the brain. 
but Octopus for some reason not sharing initiative with us, so it took effectively 3 turns to him to activate Crown. But here's the problem, with my main character that's supposed to do damage, I wasn't able to cast haste on myself and got counterspelled on the first turn. So Asterion used Potion of Speed, that's why this 3 turns to open the Crown made jumpy lethargic, or in easier words, stunned. Also I decided to cast haste one more time, and this prolongs stun for one more turn. Everyone is inside the crown already, but every time on honor mode brain destroys floor, and I need these close panels to actually do any damage to him. So finally jumpy enters crown. Two turns left, but in reality only one, because in the next turn there will be no close panels. So I need to destroy Brain in one turn by using only jump action. Everything led to this moment, and... No rational person would do as you have done. Here we go, boys. It was very hard, but I found position for Asterion to actually give me buff and take buff away from me. So as you can see, I got unlimited movement speed, even in this awful situation. Also, Brain takes damage from every source of damage, and it was just a matter of time until Brain will be finished with only jumps. So I did it, we did it, that was a cool run, I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next videos.